Welcome back to Ween's Motor Co. It's Christmas time and we got a special present to show you guys. Stick around. So if you guys have been here more than a day, you know that we have tons of projects happening here at Wings Motor Co. Tons of different motorcycles, things that we want to get you guys involved in. And one of those things was a motorcycle that we're building for the Sons of Speed Racing. So we thought Christmas time, the time of the season, the time of joy, the time of trying to figure out how to put all these different motorcycle parts together into one thing. I think the time is now for that. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna jump on the 1929 JAP right there on the table. And we're gonna see if we can get a front end on that thing, maybe a front wheel, possibly throw a rear wheel on there. A lot of fabrication going into building this motor. So let's try to figure out if we can make this happen today. Let's do it. So off with the Santa hat, on with the work hat. And this is where we're at on the 1929 JAP. Like I said earlier, we're trying to figure out how to get all of these parts to work together from motorcycles that were not the same manufacturers and different years, and but they all have one thing in common and that is they are all British manufacturing. 1929 JAP stands for John Albert Pretzwiss. He built race engines from the 20s all the way through the 50s. The frame is a 1936 Model G Royal Enfield. The front end that we have is a 1942 BSA wartime M20 girder front end and wheels and tanks and things like that. All different man British manufacturers that were trying to make work together into this one motorcycle that we can take to race at the Sons of Speed. Now, one of the biggest problems that we had that we have to tackle first is getting that front end, that BSA front end, to work with this Royal Enfield. And it's not an easy task. I mean, number one, the stem was a different diameter than what the Royal Enfields had, different lengths. Uh, the bearing cups up in the top were all different, so I had to machine all of these things to work. And what I had to do on the stem, was the shim down at the bottom, I'm sorry, the uh, the bottom bearing race at the bottom. I had to shim that to work on this stem. And then we had to extend this stem by 1.400 thousandths. So got it all cleaned up nice and neat, got all the bearing cups up in there so that they would work properly. Um, we're going with the traditional style loose ball bearings that are quarter inch. Um, and we're gonna try to get that up in there today and possibly throw a front wheel on there. So as you can see, we've made these plates to hold the engine in place and they're not made and cut and finished and everything that it will be at the end of it. But basically I've made it so that we can hold the engine in place and adjust the frame before we start drilling holes to actually mount the frame into the system. The biggest issue was the way these JAP engines were designed is that the magneto right here hangs off the front of the motor back there, right over this area. So the first point to tackle was getting this front end on there so that I can make sure that the front wheel is gonna have clearance around that magneto housing. So that's what I have to figure out today We'll get this front end on there. I'm gonna throw a 21 inch wheel and we're gonna see if we're gonna have clearance to move around that magneto. If not, I'm gonna to have to push this engine back into the frame. I really like the position that it's in right now. I do have a little bit of wiggle room, maybe an inch, inch and a half to play with, but hopefully right now the way it sits, cause I really like it there, uh, that we'll have that clearance for the front wheel. So. Let's get to work. Let's get that triple trees up in there and then start assembling that 1942 BSA girder.
now that we got that triple tree all mounted up, nice and smooth rotation with the bearings, now is going to be the time where we start assembling the rest of the girder. Now, special about these girder front ends, it works on a single spring. So that means the dampening and the return are all the same spring. Not the most conducive for racing, but it's the coolest because it's old equipment. And that's what we're doing with this motorcycle. Everything prior to 1942. At the end of this video, I'll show you the gas tank that we're going to be putting up on there. It's kind of the uh, cherry on the cake if you want to say that but anyways so we're ready to assemble this girder get all of the outside links all of those things put on there so let's get back to work and knock it out I do have to say so myself that I think that 1942 BSA M20 girder looks really good on that Royal Enfield frame. Now I'm just throwing the wheel up there. I have this uh, 21 inch spool hub rim. Uh, spool hub because the race that we're going to be racing in they don't allow any brakes. So no front brakes, no rear brakes. Uh, we're going to throw that up there with a nice little axle and a couple spacers, but I did want to stop for a second and kind of talk to you guys a little bit about what I'm thinking about naming this bike. So, um, all of the parts on this motorcycle are English parts, British motorcycle parts. And there is this special British language that I fell in love with and it cracks me up and that's called Cockney. Now, Cockney is a rhyming slang language from England, and um, some of you guys probably never have heard of it, but possibly you could have seen Austin Powers and his dad talking Cockney right here. Yeah, yeah she was a traveling striper, but a Morris dancer lived up the apples and pears. Yeah, okay. yeah, she was the barrister that became a yeah. bobby and a lorry. And they gave her the Gatling gun. So as we're thinking about that Cockney language, I was trying to think of a name to name this motorcycle. And the first one that came up was Bastard. But there's no Cockney word for bastard. So my second thought was Mutt. Because a Mutt is a dog that's made up of a bunch of different breeds. So... That's what we're going with on this, but we couldn't just go for Mutt because uh, it's not going to be an ugly dog. It's going to be a pretty dog, so we wanted to say a pretty Mutt. Well, the Cockney word for that is Dolly Mongrel, and this is the Dolly Mongrel, the motorcycle, the pretty Mutt, and that's what we're doing with it. Now, a lot of pretty parts. You've seen the front wheel. Let me show you the gas tank on this thing. Look at this beautiful piece of chromed steel. This, my friends, is a Norton International Manx gas tank from around 1938. So that is gonna be going right up on top of the Dolly Mongrel. And we also have, gotta have a little bit of Triumph on there. We have a Triumph pre-unit tank from around 19. 42 so super cool a lot of cool parts now let's get that front wheel mounted up and make sure that we have the clearance to get around that magneto let's do it all right folks wheel mounted up last thing to do make sure we clear that magneto let's check it out <laughs> we are good to go. We can continue moving forward on the Dolly Mongrel. 
Super excited about this motorcycle. A lot of cool stuff, a lot of cool fabrication going on with it, and you guys are gonna be around for all of the process. So with that, we're wrapping up the video today. Thank you guys for hanging out. If you are new around here, jump down and hit that subscribe button. If you really like the video, hit that thumbs up, turn those notifications on, and let everyone know what's going on right here at Weems Motor Co. Peace.